Hello, this is Colin Harris from Nowhere, continuing a series on hooking up SAS and Excel. We have uh, covered a range of different techniques for interfacing SAS and Excel, uh, and you can see the whole list of 11 different techniques in the slide here. Uh, the others are covered in other videos within the series. This particular video is concentrating on technique number 10, which is down the bottom there as you can see, using ODDB or ODBC to interface between SAS and Excel. Okay, how does this technique work? Right, what this is doing is Excel can bring data in to its environment using a number of different data sources. So what you can do is from the SAS environment, SAS can be set up as a provider to provide data out to OLEDB or to ODBC, which means other applications can come in and access data from within SAS using those particular technologies. So SAS is set up to be able to provide information that way. Excel is set up to be able to read information or read data using those particular interface techniques. So that's what this technique is doing. Setting up the SAS environment to allow that to happen, and then from within Excel being able to define and point out using either OLADB or ODBC to read in data from those particular approaches. So the te type of technique, most of the techniques we've seen to date has been SAS pushing out to Excel, so SAS is controlling it, where in this case it's the other way around. Excel is controlling the interaction, it is controlling, you, you can run something from within the Excel environment, go and pull that data out from those particular interface approaches. And it's for data only. Excel can go off and say, grab appropriate SAS tables. So it's not resulting information from procedure output. For instance, proc tabulate or proc print output. It's purely going and getting a SAS table. What's it good for? What it's really good for is if you want to have a, a nicely formatted Excel spreadsheet where you've changed the, uh, the fonts and the colors and got nice titles there and got uh, perhaps graphs and pivot tables and so on. So if you want to do that and you don't have PC file formats, because if you do have PC file formats, go back and look at one of the other techniques, which is the SAS Excel LibName Engine. That's what I'd totally recommend. But if you don't have that available, well, this is a good technique for you to be able to use Excel. Go off and bring the SAS data back into a pre-formatted Excel spreadsheet. So you've still got all your prettiness, nicely formatting there, and you can update that data on a regular basis as you need to. So what it's doing is at the last bullet point there, it's updating an existing XLS spreadsheet. Okay, I don't have any examples or samples to show you for this one. It's more explaining the concept, and it's something you can research further to find out how to actually do that. The main point is making you aware that, that is, this is a valid technique that can be used. So what's the advantages of this technique? Good for having pre-formatted Excel spreadsheets. No coding is required, so that's an advantage. Good for non-SAS specialists. A lot of the other techniques require you to have SAS programming skills, or at least understand the SAS programming environment. This one, though, if someone's a really Excel specialist, can bring the data in and do things all within the Excel environment, that's a good advantage for, uh, for this particular technique. You don't need the additional product PC PC file formats, or SAS access to PC file formats. So if you don't have that, this is an advantage of this technique. On the downside, it's harder to automate um, because if it's something's controlled from the SAS environment, you can have a range of SAS jobs that get run and control and create a whole lot of spreadsheets. If you want to create 100, you can put a macro loop around, create 100 different spreadsheets, where this is purely an existing one spreadsheet will go off and call on the data and be automated from that particular perspective. And last slide for this particular technique. What do you need? Uh, you need the appropriate SAS drivers to be set up. So that's something from the SAS administration point of view. Someone needs to, needs to set up SAS to be a provider for either OLADB or OTBC, depending on the technique that you need. Some people think you might need the SAS access to OLADB or ODBC products, but that's not the case. You need that if you're using SAS to read in information into SAS using those either of those type interface types, but you don't need it for setting up SAS as a provider for supplying information out to other applications. 
Thanks for watching this video, which is part of a series on hooking up SAS in Excel. The full PowerPoint presentation is available at nowhere.co.nz, which includes references to good papers that provide more details.